Hi, my name's Chris Plant from Plants of Cornwall. Um, welcome to another one of our videos. Uh, it's another lovely sunny day here in Cornwall. Um, and I want to talk to you today about uh, wildflower uh, seeding. Um, we've put together some seed mixes. Uh, the one I'm going to be talking to you about today is a uh, butterfly and bee wild meadow mix. So that's a, a mixture of uh, meadow grasses uh, with some wild flowers. So it's 80% uh, grassy, 20% wild flowers. There's over 26 varieties of flower in this particular seed mix. So the first thing we want to do is uh, choose where we want to seed. Um, the best position really is a sunny position. Most of the wildflower likes sun. Uh, so if you choose a, a nice sunny position. Uh, the next thing you want to do is kind of work out what sort of size area you want to seed with your uh, wildflower. Uh, so I'm going for an area about five meters wide here by five meters. Uh, we're going to go five meters this way, so that gives us 25 square meters. Now this seed mix is sown at five um, grams per square meter, uh, so I need 125 grams to, uh, to do this whole area. So as you can see, this area has been uh, cleared of all vegetation. That's the best thing that we want to do is, is uh, get rid of anything that was existing here. So if it's an area of existing grass, best thing to do is to get rid of that grass completely. Uh, then to cultivate the area which we've done here uh, then actually it's a good idea to leave it for a while to see if some weeds come up like and that uh, get let the ground sort of crop its first crop of weeds and then remove those weeds as well by doing that you're just kind of uh, helping the wildflower get its best start and removing any competition from it so Wildflower and uh, meadow mixes and things, they actually like a low nutrient soil. So actually you don't want to be putting any feed on the soil. And in fact, yeah, the poor quality soil is actually better in this instance. Probably one of the only instances where people want poor quality soil is when you're doing wildflower. So it doesn't have to uh, be amazing soil. And like I say, in fact, it's even better if it isn't. So now what we need to do is just prepare the ground a bit. So. Uh, once you've cultivated it, it's worth just sort of treading it in so it's kind of a bit firm underfoot and then uh, to give it a good rake um, just to remove any of the larger stones and to kind of get it sort of as level as possible. Um, everything you can do now to get a good kind of um, level area will help later. Okay, so once you've like raked your area out, you should be ready to sow. Um, so the best time to sow is during the, either the spring or the autumn. Uh, it's a good time then because obviously you're getting uh, hopefully some nice sunny days like this, but also you're going to get some rain to kind of help water the seed and help establish it as well. Okay, so now when we actually come to sowing the seed, a couple of sort of handy tips for you with that is actually to ensure that you get kind of like a good even coverage over the whole area, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, first of all, uh, what I'd recommend is doing is, if you're doing particularly the bigger the area, is splitting the seed down. So I'd recommend if you've got say 100 grams of grass seed, that you split that down into four equal um, amounts of 25 grams. Um, this just means that actually it helps you get a better even coverage. So you you don't get to the end and realize that you've uh, used up all your grass seed before you've got to where you want to get. It also means that you don't get to the end and realize you've still got half your grass seed left. It means that you can get an even coverage over the whole area. The other thing I'd recommend as well is actually mixing the grass seed with some sand. Uh, if you do that, it helps just to get, uh, again, more even distribution. It also helps to see where you've actually done your seeding. So you know where you've actually put the seed again to help get an even um, coverage. So if you split it down into sections and then mix that with a bit of sand and then you can spread that. Uh, also it helps like getting the even mix because in this we've got grass seed and we've got wildflower seed. The seeds are all different sizes so you don't want all the seeds kind of uh, to come in sort of all the grass in one area and all the wildflower in another so it helps just kind of mix up the seed as well. So I've mixed some sand with my grass seed, uh, now we're ready to sow. So we're just going to literally flick it onto the ground, trying to get a nice even coverage over the area. Like I say, just remembering where we've actually sown. And then just repeating that process 
until we've covered the whole area as we want to. Okay, now once we've got an even covering over it, we just need to rake that seed just in the top surface of the soil. Again, just remove any other lumps as they come out. Just want to get that soil just under the surface. So, it's as simple as that really. Um, so the seed has been sown. If it does continue to be uh, hot and dry, then it would be a good idea to water that. Like I say, hopefully this time of year, actually, nature takes care of that uh, for us. We don't have to worry about that too much. Okay, so now our seed is sown uh, and just gonna give you a few tips sort of, of how, to, how to look after that sort of moving forward as well. So we have now sown this seed. Uh, hopefully we start to see some things come up this spring. Uh, grass seed particularly uh, should come up fairly quickly if things stay kind of wet and warm. Um, and then actually you don't really need to do anything uh, to the area. The only thing I would recommend is if you see some weeds that you know are definite weeds and you, you definitely don't want those within that patch, then it's a good idea just to hand weed those out sort of, uh, sort of over the time as you see them coming up. Uh, then really you don't need to do anything to it until kind of September, uh, till the end of the summer. Uh, hopefully even this year if you're sowing it in spring like we have, you should start to see uh, some wildflower appear. Uh, some of the wildflower takes a bit longer, you may not see that till next year, uh, but some of the annual wildflower will come up uh, this year. Um, and actually the best thing to do is let, let it all flower and then probably come September, October time when everything sort of uh, dies back, uh, just, just let the seeds, uh, let the wildflower die back and then actually it can be cut. So then you wanna cut the whole area. Once you've cut the area, um, ideally you just want to leave the, uh, the cuttings on the ground, just leave them on there for a week or so. This is just to let any seed that's in the seed heads fall, fall out and go back into the soil, just because we want to re uh, start this kind of regeneration process that, it, that things like it dies back and then it will come back again next year. So you want to kind of uh, cut that back uh, in September, then take the cuttings off, uh, and then leave it again then hopefully next spring everything will start to come up again you can give it an early cut in the spring uh, I wouldn't cut it too late because again you don't want to be cutting wild flower that's coming up but the grass could be topped off, topped off in early spring uh, and then yeah you're ready to go again and hopefully over the next couple of years the, the area will just get better and better if you'd like to get involved in doing something like this yourself uh, then I'd encourage you to do that. It's a great way of getting pollinators into your garden. You don't need a big area. You could just take a small corner of your lawn or you can even do it in a container. It can be that small. You don't need to have a big garden. This is a great way to introduce more pollinators into the garden, which we're all keen to do at this time. So I'd encourage you to get involved with this. Uh, okay, the last thing to do is head to our website. Uh, on there, you can buy our seed mix. Uh, our bees and butterfly seed mix. We've done that in three different size packs depending on what size area you've got. We've also just got a, a introduced a, a, a bigger line of pollinator plants. So again, if you uh, want to sort of uh, introduce more pollinators in your garden, then actually this is a great way of doing that. So head to the website, find out more there. Uh, you can watch this video on our YouTube channel. Uh, please like us on there. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.